round two coming at you. We couldn't get you any more rounds uh, last time, but this we have our round three um, officially coming up. Um, we have Nick on KO on the very bottom, and we have Joe on Riptide on the top up here. This is our round two feature match we got coming at you guys. Ooh, starting off with a cast bones. Man, coming in hot and heavy to start this game. Jesus. Five mites. Okay, and we got a blood rush bellow in the top cards. Woo! Jeez. All right. All right. It's looking like a pretty good way to start out here. Um, Joe is a very experienced Riptide player. He played Riptide at our last Talishar tourney and did pretty well. Um, I think... Uh, I think top four. I think it was top four. Maybe I, I had our last Talishar tournament. I can't exactly remember. Um, I know I know he made top eight for sure. Um, and then also, if you guys are hanging out on Twitch today, um, we're going to be doing channel point predictions throughout the day. Um, so I have a poll running right now, a prediction running on who's going to win what game. Um, Jesus, a searing shot for 10. Strap in, Nick. <laughs> My God, what a start. Yo, Drew, what's up, dude? I'm sorry you couldn't be here today, man. I wish you could have played. Defended that title, baby. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Next block him with two cards here. There is no on hit effect other than the aspect of losing life. So Nick blocks with Bone Breaker. The Wrecker Romp does give him the Might Token. So he's going to have six Might Tokens going into this turn. I wonder if he's got a card in Arsenal he wants to play or if it's just going to be a Claw. The Claw. Oh, man. Sue. Man, that's tough. I'm not sure if I would have blocked there. I might have just went to 29. I might have just went to 29 to just have my BRB turn, fam. I won't lie to y'all. I will not lie to y'all, fam. <laughs> yes, true. Unfortunately, working is a necessary action to do to live an action. Jesus, I'm like, I'm talking like cards. Talking like cards is all I know. Like... Uh, yeah, this gains go again. Burr, 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 burr. Like, okay, Sigil of Solace reloads Bolton Shot. Bolton Shot comes in for five because of one rainy boy. Right? You know, whenever you play a card from hand, it's insane. I mean, that's true. He did block nine and then claw for nine. Like, it's an 18 point turn cycle. It is a very good turn. I'm not disagreeing. Keeping your life is, like, keeping your life up is pretty good. I, I do agree, but man, like the idea of having five mites, the, the idea of having five mites and a blood rush bellow, whew, brother, I just, man, I won't lie. That just, that talks to me, fam. That talks to me. But you are right, Drew. Keeping your life total up is very important against, uh, against Riptide for sure. All right, so Endless Arrow for six here. So it looks like... It looks like uh, Joe just ended up taking the Claw for nine. Ho! Well, Endless Arrow action? Or I guess Snapdragons, that makes sense because he can Death Dealer it in. Now he's going to Bullseye Bracers it in. Starting out aggressive here. And gives, Nick's, gives Nick the Codex of Inertia. Okay, we're rolling hot so far. Man, Drew, or I'm sorry, Joe is applying the pressure here. So, depending on what Joe hit, he could be able to throw the arrow that he hit, that's up, that's face down, throw it, and then ponder into a six-card hand because he could, like, just play, like, the Lexi game where he has six cards here. Nick's gonna have to take some damage here if this is what he's want, if he's looking to, like, keep his whole hand here, bro. Because, I mean, this is looking pretty good, like... That's the thing about Riptide, man. Like, Riptide just comes out, like... Like, he just... He's so aggressive. Okay. So, we ponder, and... I was like, Joe does not get to have a six-card hand because his New Horizon card is not... Fa like, his Arsenal card's not face-up. Would have been awesome if he would have hit one. Okay, Blood Rush Bellow. Here we go. Nice. Four cards and a Blood Rush Bellow is nothing to scoff at. That is a really good start to this. <laughs> All 
All right. Mandible claw. Mandible claw for five. Frailty trap. Okay. The frailty trap really just having like, I really, I guess it really gets five points of value there because it gets three points from blocking. It gives him the frailty for minus one on his claw and then it deals a damage to Nick. So like really getting five points there out of his trap is actually insane. Like the casual zero for five. And then a runner runner. Okay. Okay, so Nick's making the agility for next turn, and then he's just throwing the runner runner for eight here. Okay. The one thing that I would be concerned about from Nick's point of view is that he's out of equipment pretty fast. Like, he gave a scowling flush bag last turn to, like, block the endless arrow hit, the second hit from the endless arrow. <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest, I think I might have just given him the hit. Like, I don't know. Combo turn. Did you, did you go off, Dustin? Did you, like, have your crazy combo, bro? Living the dream out there? Inertia trap, okay. That's the thing, man. That's the thing. Joe's just like, oh, I'm gonna block everything. Take no damage. Throw four at you. Oh, man. Another Codex of Inertia? So I don't know that Joe was on three Codex of Inertia last time we saw him, man. I don't know that he was on three Codex of Inertia back in January, the last time we had one of these Talishar tournaments. I mean, I guess, yeah, that makes sense, Brando. That makes a lot of sense. Like, you actually want to go ahead and um, you actually want to go ahead and get rid of your equipment as early as possible. That actually makes sense. And yeah, KO does turn on every single trap. Go again, buffing power. Like, KO feels like a like nightmare matchup for Riptide, to be honest. Plus, like, Joe is an extremely, like, seasoned... Um, Riptide player. Doing it now? He's He's been comboing for so long, he's still in the middle of his combo turn. That's crazy, bro. Absolutely nuts. Joe deciding how he wants to block here. Nick coming in with that swing big for nine go again, which is like really good. I mean, the agility and the might are looking solid here because Nick has an opportunity to throw the card in his arsenal if he wants to, or I guess even if his hand is like not great, he can just throw the claw here. No traps here to like really get him with anything. Oh, it's a cast bones. Oh man, so much value. So much value, bro. Cast Bones is such a great card. Like, normally that card is a 0 for 5. I feel like for most, like, most of the time, that card's floor is a 0 for 4. <laughs> Alright, Joe deciding how he wants to deal with his turn. He does have a Quicken token from blocking out the Swing Big, which I don't really think he can utilize here. Um, at least not to my knowledge. I guess he could trench away his arsenal. Oh, wow. Okay. If he had the Codex in his hand and, like, a zero-cost arrow in his arsenal, he could have, like, I don't know, like... Or I guess he would have had to have had an arrow in his hand. So if, if Joe was able, he could have trenched away the card there, activated Death Dealer to load an arrow, draw into Codex, throw the arrow, and then play Codex, which would have been, like, actually insane. But... Okay, so we get a frailty token. I wonder what Joe is going to go get back. Um, Searing Shot looks pretty good. Yeah, he gets Searing Shot. I mean, he can't get the Endless Arrow, but he already has a Ponder token. Like, getting the Endless Arrow kind of seems, like, silly to me. Um, I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't play a ton of Riptide. I have played Riptide, but not played a ton of it before. <laughs> Nick gets back a... Runner Runner. 
and then discards a pulping. And he's looking to use the agility token to use the runner runner to actually get another agility token so that he can start stringing some go again turns together. Pretty heads up play from Nick right there. And this is a runner runner for 10. He got plus five for mites and minus one from the frailty. So six plus five is 11 minus one is 10. <laughs> Joe just uh, taking some damage here. Wow, Joe must really like his hand here. And we get six mites. He, got, he hit six mites. Oh, Nick's on red agile windup. That's interesting. That's spicy spicy. Yeah, dude, you, you can tell that Joe's looking to push the tempo here. Like, I think Nick might be best off to just, like, block a little bit here. Yeah, he has played all three cast bones, which is actually insane. Joe, it sucks you have to work today, man, but I'm glad that you can, like, hang out with us for a little bit, even if you are working. Sigil of Solace to go to 27. Reload a card. Bonkers. Absolutely bananas. And a death touch. Jesus. Joe really putting the pressure on here. And the crazy part is, like, even if, like, it's a close game, Joe is only, like, one buzzsaw trap from, like, just, like, taking the game back in his direction completely here. It's absolutely crazy. Yo, Chris, what's up, dude? How are you, brother? Getting paid to watch the homies. Hey, man, like, you could, you could be getting paid to do worse things, man. You know what I mean? Like, it could be worse. Okay, Savage Feast is going to be for what, 12? It's 12, then Nick can throw the claw, then Nick can play whatever's left in his hand, which is cool. Dude, I love Riptide, Billy. Just got off work, man? Well, dude, I'm glad you're off work, man, already. I was like, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I know you had to miss today because of it, but... Glad you're off work, get to hang out the rest of the day. Okay. <laughs> well, dude, I appreciate that. I appreciate you coming by and hanging out, man, after you got off work. For sure, I appreciate you coming by and hanging out. Dude, and I hope, I hope you guys have fun at the PT, man. I'm really excited. I hope I get to see you on camera this weekend, bro. What was the first card? I don't understand... Nick is just missing out on value here by not playing the Mandible Claw. So if he plays the Mandible Claw from there, he can actually just use the Tunic and the last card from his hand to play the Bear Fangs. I'm, I'm a little confused. Like, we're, we're, we're leaving three points on the table there. Yo, Scowling, what's up, brother? How are you, dude? Zero chance I'm on stream. Why, Chris? Why is there a... Dude, the only way there's a zero chance you're on stream is if you're not playing in the PT, fam. Like, that's it. That's the only way there's a zero chance. I am really excited for the coverage, bro. I, I Dude, I'm so pumped to watch the PT next weekend. Like, I am actually super excited for that. Oh, okay. Then I guess your statement stands, Chris. <laughs> bro, What? Block him a new horizon. Okay, I mean, I guess it's not as bad for him as it is, like, as it was for... As it was for Lexi. If they have activated an, a reaction, which I don't think Nick has... What's he doing with that tunic? Is he pitching a yellow? So Nick chose to defensively block two as opposed to attack for three more. And I'm going to be honest. I think I would have blocked for three there. I don't know, man. Dude, Scowling, I'm glad you got to come by, man. I know I'm like always streaming when you're like asleep and stuff, bro. Because like just our time zone differentials are just so bad. Um, but like I'm glad you got to come by and hang out today, man. I appreciate it. All side events in the battle hardened. Chris, if you are playing all side events in a battle hardened, brother... That here is what I will tell you. You're going to make so much money from your weekend in LA. Honestly, like I, you probably make enough money to like cover your flight and like pay for your trip, honestly, like, which is awesome. It's really cool that like playing inside events is the highest like EV that you can have. So we have E-Strike. 
And then, and then Nick blocks with two equipment. Takes five, goes to 11. So the problem with throwing the pulping here, in my opinion, is that if Joe has two traps, he can literally just play a trap, reload the other trap, and then play the other trap, and then stop the dominate effect, which is, like, not great. Dude, yeah, those E-Pots are going to be worth a lot of money for sure. Those those E-Pots are going to be worth a lot of money. Money, 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 money. So the pulping actually works out for Nick. He only blocks for three, and now he's down to ten. This has been a pretty good game. Now, sim packing's just for six here, but I, I still think this is a good like value trade here. I already want them rip my wallet, he said. <laughs> oh, they are kind of cool, man. They are kind of cool. I wouldn't mind to have one, but I probably won't buy one, to be honest. Unless I find one at a pretty good deal. Okay. Joe going to four. This has been like bang bang like knockout blow style like game right here this has been crazy plays lace with frailty reloads a card activates trench plays codex and then he's gonna go get the remorseless i bet sleep dart is pretty good sleep darts probably better than that if it was a premeditate he could go get the death touch and like depending on what nick's hand is he might not be able to block it all Nick gets a pulper and a, a pulper, a pulping and discards a command and conquer, and it's sleep dart for eight. If Nick is able to block this, I think he should. I'm just I'm just being honest, I think he should block this. Let's go. Robert said one one. He's pulling it back, boys. <laughs> I mean, playing Riptide is a choice. Dude, Joe is like, Joe played Riptide in the last tournament we had, the last Talishar tournament that we had, bro. He's like, I think he's like a pretty avid um, Riptide player. Ooh, man, I got to see what Nick's hand is, because I don't know about going to going to three there. That's uh, that's scary. That is very scary indeed. All right, so we got five Dominate, and if he has two traps here, like, oh, man, like Nick is like, one turn away from being like one bad like trap hand away from being dead being at three being at three is terrifying against riptide because like especially as ko because you turn on all of their traps like even if boulder trap only gets rid of the counter on tunic like like the blocking value of tunic like it's still like a point of damage it's dealing so lucky he even hit a six there what do you mean, that he discarded a six? I mean, I assume that, like, he's playing... Oh! Oh my god, I just realized because KO's turned off, bro, because of Sleep Dart. Oh my god. Dude, you are so right. You are so right, fam. That is actually terrifying to think about. Sink below. Load another trap or another D-React. Play it just to stuff this. Yep, there it is. Just to stuff it. Stop the go again. That is like one of the problems with pulping in this matchup. Was there a wild ride he could have gotten over here? Do we have wild rides over here? No, there's no wild ride. So pulping was his best go again option. I mean, I still don't know that I would have gone to three. Like, even if you block some damage, like if you block six and take two and like, I don't know, stay at whatever he was at and then throw the claw. I think that might be a better play, if I'm being honest. I don't know. Roll scabs? I mean, rolling scabs is not bad here. I mean, I feel like at a certain point, like, against certain things, you just gotta be like, well, we're hoping to get lucky here, boys. Just give the tunic here, Nick. Unless the tunic has a big part of your turn this turn, just give the tunic, bro. Okay, so he's going to play a two cost. No, he's going to throw this and then play a two coster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Man, 
they're just cod with with him being at two man there are so many traps that kill him here yep nick goes to one this is this is what i was afraid of here i, I mean if he has another go again trap it's over right And a swing big for seven? Okay. I mean, hey, like, none of the traps are turned on here. Like, in, like none of the, like, greater power, none of the reaction traps. Like, I'm going to assume Joe blocks with two cards here and just arsenals, but I don't know. Like, this could be a... This could be a... Like, <sighs> he could block one card and trench and go to one. And then it's who draws the trap or who draws the reckless swing first. <laughs> uh, I've never actually played Wounded Bull Riptide, but like I think it would be fun to play. Like I think like that's a deck I would enjoy just from playing Icelander as long as I did. I don't know. Wounded Bull like has a special place in my heart after playing Icelander as much as I did for sure. <clears throat> Okay, throw sin packing, block six. Man, that collapsing trap is just staring at him. It's just staring at him, bro. It's just staring at him, bro. Like, I mean, there's going to come a turn when Nick's going to have a go again thing he's going to do more than likely. At least I would assume anyway. Yeah, the, the trap triggers, like, they get you at the end of the game. They do. They get you at the end of the game. It's tough. Well, Nick's like, nah, fam, we ain't going out like that. <laughs> yeah, Nick now knows that he has that. Like, Nick is now aware that he has the go again. Um, and so he actually just, or I, I guess it depends on what he trenched away right there. Oh, no, he didn't trench anything away. Collapsing trap was destroyed. Wonder why he didn't do that. Now we're rolling scabs. Here we go. Here we go. I'm surprised he didn't just block six there, honestly. I mean, it's possible he may just be thinking, like, you know what? I'm just going to... He may just be thinking, you know what? To heck with it. I'm just going to kill him. To heck with blocking. We're going to kill him. Playing cards on my opponent's turn does have a special place in my heart. I get that, Brickless. I get that, for sure. I mean, yeah, Drew, I think that's the best way to, like, look at playing against Riptide is to assume that you start the game at 31. I think that is a very good way to play it. I also don't really know how I feel about Riptide going to two because now, like, there's always the, the Reckless out. Bro, like, there's just so much here. All Nick has to do is roll every single turn and, like, try to stay alive until he gets to... until he gets to... Reckless Swing. Like, I'm really surprised. I'm, like, very, very surprised at how this game has played. This has been, like, a wild game, bro. Like, way more back and forth than I thought there was going to be. It really looked like Joe was in the driver's seat for a while. So, Nick's rolled a 2 and a 3. So, no additional action points gamed off of our two scab rolls here. Riptide can't attack, and KO can't go again. I mean, yeah. So, did Nick pitch the Reckless early in the game? I wasn't paying attention. Now, I say that because most KOs are only on, like, one... One list. Or, like, one Reckless. There are also traps in Riptide's deck that go from buffing, right? So, it's just incorrect to make the Bite token here, right? Like, is that... Is that fair to say? I don't know. I could be wrong on that. get some water going it's two o'clock and i haven't really had any water it can just pass turn oh you're talking about nick i mean yeah nick can just pass the turn i just assumed there's probably like something else he could play there but i was going to assume because i mean nick has to have the reckless swing like Bro. 
You think two reckless is right? Okay, then it's it's possible that Nick's on two reckless instead of one. Uh oh. I don't know that. I'm worried that Nick doesn't realize what he's setting himself up here for. Six. Oh God. Does Nick have the reckless? There it is. And Nick gets him with the reckless. Wow, what a game.